Hello and welcome to the Powerhouse Church of God in Christ. I'm Odell Riley, the pastor here with our first lady, Lafrida Riley. Hello and welcome to this week's Sunday School Highlights. This week we're going to be talking about the festivals of Booth coming from Nehemiah chapter 8 verses 13 through 18. So get your Bibles, your Sunday School books, your commentaries, whatever you have, and let's get ready to study. is a phrase that was uh, coined from political parties in the hot air, I guess they were speaking at the time. Well, I'll tell you, the coldest I've ever been was in Chicago with May. Wow, it was windy. <laughs> Coming across a bridge over Lake Michigan, a little body of water, thinking it was springtime here because it was springtime back home. I did not come prepared for winter in May in Chicago. But we are here, it is warm, there has been record-breaking heat. Um, there are heat advisory actually on the signs I'm used to seeing traffic-related information, but there were heat advisories on those signs. It's, um, but it's been good, it's been good. Yeah, and frankly, the temperature here has been a lot different than it was back home. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the humidity, this heat and humidity at home would be almost unbearable, but, but it's been, it's been, it's a great city. Uh, it's a uh, great lot, lot of history here. Mm -hmm. A lot of our, uh, I know a lot of our uh, ancestors from the South moved up to this part of the country. Uh, so it's rich. Uh, this city of Chicago is very rich in uh, African American heritage uh, and just roots in from the South. And uh, it's a city that gets a bad rap in the media about the crime and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. But frankly, it's a Per capita, still looking at ratios like that is, is not as bad as the media make it appears. It's not as corrupt or more corrupt than any more cities, but the media gives it a bad rap. Yeah. So born here, raised here until my early teens, um, 14, and um, I don't know. Still feels still feels me very much like home, but I always enjoy Chicago. Always enjoy. It. Now, if I'm up here too long when it's cold and the snow is piled high. I'm typically ready to leave after a few days. <laughs> but it's been it's been a good trip. It's been a good visit. Um, we've actually attended the uh, PCA uh, Pentecostal Churches of the Apostolic Faith International, their uh, International Holy Convocation uh, this weekend. Right off the heels of our jurisdictional Holy Convocation, which was what two weeks ago. Yes, which was amazing. Yeah, that was absolutely amazing. You know, we should have stopped and done some talks on um, AIM and the whole you know, experience. We should have done, done some small talks on that. But from the onset, you know, the uh, pre-musical, there, there were a lot of doubts there because there were uh, quartets and that sort of thing. And the people, you know, when I think quartets, I think of a poor guy <laughs> harmonizing and the bass. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. So I think of that, but um, you know, the the from the musical, the musical was good. It was well attended. You had um, Tuesday morning. You had uh, Elder Timmy Battle preaching Tuesday morning. Lit a fire in that conference. Set that thing on fire. Yes. And it went from there. Yes. <laughs> then you had the official opening ceremony that was uh, Tuesday night, which was that was just uh, it was very unique. It was something that uh, you may read about, you know, the Ark of the Covenant, you may read about the shofar, you may read about uh, certain ceremonies, but to actually see. And uh, we'll, commend, we'll commend our pastor, superintendent, administrative assistant, uh, whatever we want to call him. He did a great job with 
uh, orchestrating a lot of that and, and pulling that together. And the men, we had the men from from Powerhouse, the men from Kingdom Builders District. We had the men from the jurisdiction supporting in that effort. So it was a great opening ceremony. Had the flags, had the flags you know, on the United States flag, the state flag, the district flags, the flags, you know, the name of God, the banners with the name of God, on it, names of God. We had uh, the flaggers, the ladies who do the flags, to hear and feed and all. Uh, you had the dancers. It was, it, was, it was an amazing time. In fact, if you want to watch it, go back. It's on Facebook. You can go back and watch it. One of the things that stood out to me, uh, first of all, just grateful and thankful for all the people that contributed, all the people that support that was in the proceeding, but all of those that helped prepare and get those things ready so that we could actually uh, perform them. They're just my hats off that and grateful to them, to all, everyone that contributed to that. But one of the things that stood out to me when you go back and watch the video is that hope, is that fire, that flag, the mm -hmm. one that Sister Lilia Carey, it just yeah. stands out yeah. in the holy. crowd. Yeah. Holy, holy. It, I think that's what it says. Holy, is that what it says? I don't know if it says holy, holy. or fire. I'm not sure which one it says, but the flag just in that room, it just, I mean, it just speaks volume. It just, mm -hmm. it's powerful. But if you get a chance to go back, uh, look at Facebook. Uh, you can catch all of the night services on there. All of them were great. Mm -hmm. uh, Supervisor Terry, uh, Bishop Wells, it was Bishop Wells, Supervisor Terry, Bishop Macklin was awesome. And our bishop was great as well. So. Nathaniel is still talking about supervisor. Yeah. <laughs> supervisor Terry, he's still talking. He's still, he's still talking about her message. Uh, so even even here attending services, uh, he's been. I don't know. He, if I say I'm going to church, they're going to church too. They're not trying to stay in the room. They're not trying to do something else. Last night the pastor went to church without us. And I thought I was going to have to take them out of the tub 9, 9.30 at night and take them to church. So uh, thank God they, they have church in them. We pray that church remains part of not just church, but... <laughs>
they had not been doing that somewhere I read they had not been doing that since Joshua of Nun, which we know is like about 200 years right, right before the judges about 200 years <laughs> remember the hundreds judges, of years <clears throat> during the book of judges people started doing things whatsoever was right in their sight so they had not practiced that and I didn't realize it they had not practiced that all this while they're trying to get things right they want to do things right so this is the lead into as we're reading the book and then find something in the law. And when you find that little treasure, and it may be one of the keys um, to what you need to do, you need to use that key. You know, one of the things that, when, and I don't know if it got into this lesson or not, but you see, he talked about how he stood up on the altar, how he built a platform for him to get stood up to read. And that's one of the, uh, uh, I guess, the anchor spot that you see many times in our churches today when you get ready to read scripture as people to stand. Mm -hmm. Because that's what they did. They built a platform for the priest to stand up on as he was reading the word of God. But he also asked the people to stand. So mm -hmm. that's something that, uh, frankly, we had gotten away from. <clears throat> and over the last few years, we've seen introduce more, more and more people requesting people to stand as they read the word of God. So the, the Bible base is coming from Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 13 through 18, the truth, uh, truth, the festival of booths, and Ezra's reading were an observation of the Israelites' wilderness exile and giving of the law. The memory verses all the congregation of them that would come again out of captivity made booth and set under the booth for since the days of Jeshua, the son of Nun, unto that day had not the children of Israel done so. And there was a great sadness, a great gladness, sorry. That's Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 17. Our lesson aimed by the end lessons, we'll understand the significance of celebrating God's blessing. We will reflect on our own attitude towards celebrating God's blessing and plan to celebrate God's blessings. Our life need for today's lesson, we will study God's word to make the word central to our lives. And the Bible learning, learn how the Israelites celebrated God's word, and how you can celebrate God's word in your life. The application, to understand it, observing and celebrating God's word, enjoy always to acknowledge the presence and power of God's. And our response to students is to understand how the Israelites celebrated the reading and observation of God's light, God's law in the in light of their wilderness exile. So what I sort of took from all of that is God's given a word. In this case, it's the law, which is the basis of their life, uh, their life with people and their life with God. So you have uh, how they're supposed to uh, conduct ceremonies, how they're supposed to observe rituals, all this sort of thing, and how they're supposed to treat one another. So God had given them this. The first five books of the Bible, we look at them as the book of the law, mm -hmm. um, the Pentateuch, the, uh, the Torah. The first five books of the law, this is how they should live. The rest of the stuff that we're looking at is either their history or prophetic words to them uh, while they're in exile that you're, you know, you're going to, you're going into captivity or, you know, you're there and you will come out of captivity. So whenever we read this and they start talking about law, this is what God had established for them to live by in the first place. Mm -hmm. And just think about this. If you have the blueprint, you have the map, you have whatever, and, and God has said, you know for sure for your life. For, and this is very hard for African Americans this is very difficult for us because we've been, we were removed from uh, what we knew was ours. We we're removed from that, okay? Uh, as Africans, we were removed from that. And then as African Americans, you're trying to build and establish and uh, have something firm and concrete as to this is what God has spoken to us. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we struggle with that. We say we're reading somebody else's history. We're reading the history of the of the Jews, and this is what God has told the Jews how they should live. But what has God told us and how we should live? Thank God, none of us anymore live under the law, but we're living under the dispensation of grace. So this that helps to reconcile things for us. There's no more Jew. There's no more Gentile. 
when it comes to the Lord anymore. We are the same. God loves us the same, and we have uh, we come to God by belief and faith in Jesus Christ. You know, and, and we have the opportunity as we study God's Word because the, the Word is good for all seasons. It's good for if you are not in a situation, life is good, the Word is good. If you're in a crisis, the Word is good. If you're going in a crisis, it's good. If you're in a crisis, it's good. If you're coming out of a crisis, it's good. If you're out of a crisis. So the, the then that's what I think this lesson highlights is our opportunity is to dig in, not just casually, because the reality is that Regardless how many times we read scripture mm -hmm. and read the Bible, we can always get more. And that's the great part of the, this, this, this book and this word mm -hmm. is that it's, it's life. It's always alive. It's always active. It's always revealing. And it's always more to get out of it. You can always get more out of it. So you never to a point that you're so good at it that you don't have to do it. You have to consume it like your body needs food, your soul needs the word of God. So it's incumbent upon us not get so busy, not get so sidetracked with all these other things that we miss the opportunity to consume it on a regular basis. Amen. Amen. All right. So Nehemiah 8, you may want to, in your studies and reading this, you may want to actually look at um, a, a version outside of the King James Version. Alongside, how about that? Alongside King's James Version, uh, this is written around uh, 440 uh, BC. You know, the funny thing about this is whenever you have the action that's going taking place, which is probably around 440, 445 BC, the action is taking place. You have uh, someone who has to compile it, and then somebody who has to publish it. Someone said it's probably published around 4. 100 BC. So you have uh, the book of Ezra and Nehemiah. At one point, some scholars said that it was separate. Some scholars said that it started as one. Ezra and Nehemiah started as one book and it was separated. Some people said that um, it was combined as a political movie because they didn't want Nehemiah to have with the credit. I don't know. I don't know. We got two books that we look at. <laughs> the writing style looks a little different to me, but I'm. And I won't claim to be an expert on that. They look like their styles are different, mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, that's another whole story. So you may want to, you may want to look at um, another version alongside your key saying first uh, to make it a uh, easier read. Okay. All right. So uh, do we want to go ahead and jump in here? Yeah. So yeah. we'll take a break. What do you think? Let's take a break here. Let's take a break, uh, and maybe we'll be able to show you some of the stuff uh, that uh, we talked about the. Uh, Convocation. Maybe insert some stuff, something in there. Maybe that opening ceremony, a piece of that, so you kind of get a feel for what happened as part of that. We'll awesome. be right back.
also Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 13. I'm going to read the Amplified. And on the second day, all the heads of the father's household, of all the people, the priests and the Levites were gathered before Ezra, the scribe, to gain insight into the words of the law, which is considered the divine instructions. Mm -hmm. They found written in the law how the Lord had commanded through Moses that the Israelites should live in booths, huts, during the feast of the seventh month. I'm going to pause right there. Um, and look at this. Well, I read the look, at, look at this, how, um, so they're reading. <laughs> and I don't know if you want to call it coincidence or not. I hate to, you know, I think God has, God is doing everything um, in a planned way. So they're reading. And it just so happens that this is the time they're supposed to be in the, uh, in the, Feast of Boots as Ezra is reading this. So they have the book of the law. They're trying to do everything right. They've been secured. They have uh, gone through the doubters, you know, the, the people who, who tried to stop this work. Stopped them actually um, before, sent letters to kings. They need to stop this work. But, you know, they, would, they, they made it. They made it. So they made it. Now they have their temporary built. The glory of the Lord is, is in the place. They have the wall secure in their cities. And the Lord says, now this is what I called of you. Go back and remember my law. Remember what I told you to do, exactly how I told you to do it. And this is how I want you to remember it. And uh, the commemoration is you live in the, the boots for a period of time, seven days, I believe it is. Yep. You live in the booth in celebration, in a celebration, not mourning, not whatever. Go read the scriptures right before that. But in celebration for a period of time. You know, it's interesting you look at the timing because it's, 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 it's the holiday is called Sukkot, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, this year in 2023, it's going to be September the 29th through October the 6th. Uh, this, and it's a week long Jewish holiday that comes five days five days after Yom Kippur, the cut celebrates the gathering of the harvest and commemorates the miraculous protection God provided for the children of Israel when they left Egypt. Mm -hmm. They celebrated by dwelling in foliage-covered booth known as Sukkot, and by taking uh, together the four of the special species of vegetations. The first two days are from sundown to September the 29th until uh, nightfall on October the 1st, 2023, and only until midnight on September the 30th in Israel uh, are the holidays or the work is forbidden, forbidden. So it's seven day celebration, but for two days there's no work. And then after that there's limited, there's restricted work. And the inter intermediate days, which will be from night nightfall, October the 1st, until sundown, October the 6th. Uh, and that's when they, you know, they, they, they live in the booth and, and all that. That's, they live in the booth, I guess, for the whole seven days. But And then the final two days, October the 6th uh, until midnight, October the 8th, uh, is considered a separate holiday. Well, it's a seven-day celebration, but it's broken down into three pieces. First two days, limited, no work, first two days, limited work next few days, and then uh, last couple of days, I think it's limited work as well. Okay. Uh, and I, I go this, I Google, so I go this, Google this real quickly, and it's just celebrated today. Mm -hmm. I, yes, I'm curious. This is, these are today's days that was given. Okay, it's it's yet celebrated. Thank you. Uh, today, I thought you were giving us uh, like to what the day no. would be. No, this this is September uh, 29th through October 6, 2023. Okay, so it is still physically done today. And, but this one says for nine days. This one says for nine days. It comes five days at the young court. Mm -hmm. And this one says it's celebrated to nine days. This one shows seven. Yeah, and, and I've studied seven before. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to stress 
I'm stressed out. But let me, let me just, there's something that came to my mind when they start talking about this, how those people had to go gather. And we've been to Jerusalem before and been in this area. So you, you recognize a couple of things. One is that when they start talking about going out and getting this brush and stuff in the celebration, that's no simple task because there's not a lot of that foliage that's readily available. So people had to go out and they had to, had to exert effort and energy to go out and accumulate this stuff so that they could build those booths. Said it was not a simple task. Uh, they, they would celebrate. They would send an announcement out that it was going to happen. They would go out. Uh, they blow the shofar, which would mean that there was communication, that there's a message coming. They would send people out to inform everybody that you need to get ready for this celebration. In glass. In glass. You, you know what this reminds me of? Um, we had a, at the end of the Ang Convocation, uh, Powerhouse. Uh, it was. We had more than powerhouse. We had more than powerhouse. We had the uh, uh, vice president of missions. He and uh, a group came over. We had someone from the music department, uh, Edwin, brother Edwin. He came over. The Sunday school sister Armstrong and her husband they came over. But we had uh, an effort where we had to bag things for some days, bag things for some days, and uh, gave out 35,000 pounds of goods over, uh, most of it over that Saturday. Mm -hmm. But the people came with one, one heart, one spirit, one full goods, and we enjoyed one another doing this. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we got to watch, we got to watch from, from that Monday forward, we got to watch and minister uh, Brown on that forklift and him, <laughs> him playing with it like it's a toy. He did get it stuck. It was on one grassy spot in the whole yard and he got it stuck. But that's another whole story. But it, it was <laughs> like a toy. It was like a toy. I think he did that when he worked. I think that's when he did it. Before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and, but the people were there, they enjoyed one another. I didn't hear anybody uh, complaining about the work. I didn't hear anybody complaining about um, didn't, you know, couldn't get along. I didn't hear any of that. You know, we came to do a work and it was joyous. And I'm thinking about this. You know, this was, like you said, an extended effort out in the uh, elements, you know, getting whatever they had to get for this time period. And these people built these booths all over the place, all over the place. Somebody said it was literally dancing in the streets. You know, you hear that phrase. Somebody said it was, it was literally dancing in the streets. But this was a joyous to remember what God has told you to do. To yeah. remember. And, and one thing I just point out that if you are considering vis visiting Israel or visiting any country that's got uh, religious, uh, strong religious belief and background, you might want to take a look at the religious holidays before you go so that you be conscious of it. Because the first time we went to Israel, remember we, we were there and, uh, and what was it? Uh, on the Sabbath. When we got on the elevators and pushing the elevator button was considered work. So it, the elevator stop on every floor yep. uh, during that yep. time frame. So you, you might want to do a little research just on some of those things. And you may be okay on. with that. You may be okay with that. You know, you may want to be on the 30th floor and have a view. <laughs> but just remember, you got to come 29, 28. <laughs> Ain't going up. You're going to be one, two. <laughs> <laughs> so that you may decide you want to be on the first or the second floor. But at, at any rate, even when we went to Egypt, you had the... Uh, Library of Alexandria, which I really wanted to uh, attend, and it was closed because it was holiday. So yes, be cognizant of it, but also it was good because we got to see the uh, on the news we got to see them celebrating. Uh, it's not Yom Kippur; it was a uh, 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 Russia, Russia, uh, Russia, Shana. Russia, Shana. Felt like I was going to say the wrong thing, and um, we got to see a little bit of them having an ox. Uh, I believe that was an ox that they were skinning. Uh, that was part of the sacrifice, and got to see. This was on the news. On the news, got and to I see saw like a bull on the back of a truck. Yeah, they were yeah. We got to see the uh, pools of, of blood, and them having to wash that, spray that blood off of you know areas that they were um, working. So a lot of times we see these things, we think about these things, we think that they're, the priests had these nice little neat clean jobs and then you come to realize 
the work wisdom. that goes into um, recognizing God as God. And we know we say, you know, we say by grace, but you're still going to have to work. Uh, faith without works is dead. You're still going to have to work. You're going to have to work to uh, celebrate God, to acknowledge God for who he is. Sometimes your work comes mental. It's mental. Mentally, the devil wants to get in your mind. He wants to uh, minimize God. He wants to uh, dilute your image of God. And sometimes that's the work. Sometimes the work is making sure you put God first instead of doing everything else you want to do during the course of the day and then say that little lazy prayers you're getting into bed but <laughs> falling asleep on your knees sometimes the uh, work is there no i'm i've got to time management i got to do things the way i need to do things so i can put him first because you know what god probably has something he wants to say to us first thing in the morning you know uh, when you, when you start talking about the sacrifice what occurred to me is Offering the sacrifice, the sacrifice itself, mm -hmm. is messy business. Yeah. You know, oftentimes people see uh, leaders and they see religious people, and what they see is the dressed up people. Mm -hmm. But this work is messy. Yes. It, it, it's, 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 and that's, I'll just leave it at that. It's, it's messy work. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I think we stop there. When I, when I go back and look at the uh, I guess the punctuation. If you look at the King James Version that I'm looking at, it shows verses 13 and 14. It shows verse 13 by itself. I'll read that again. I read it a minute ago. On the second day, all the heads of the father's household, of all the people, the priests and the Levites were gathered before Ezra the scribe to gain insight into the words of the law, the divine instructions of God's word themselves. There's a period there. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the uh, King James Version, 14 and 15, as a colon between the 14 and 15. So we'll go ahead and read that together. It said, if, and read it in Amplified, though. They found written in the law how the Lord had commanded through Moses that the Israelites should live in booths, those are huts, during the feast of the seventh month. So they proclaimed and published an announcement in all the cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go out to the hills and bring olive branches, wild olive, myrtle, wild olive, myrtle, palm, and other leafy branches to make booth as it is written. And I mentioned that a few minutes ago, that that was an effort to go out and collect these things. But let me also point out that even though they're celebrating, that this, this, this holiday or this festival celebrates two things. Mm -hmm. It celebrates the... Uh, the them coming out of Egypt, but it also celebrates the harvest. It celebrates what we would consider the fall harvest. Mm -hmm. And so both of those things, so sometimes we, we get caught up in one side, forget about the other side. And and I don't know, and I didn't do the research on this, we may have some insight into this, that did I think that they may have been celebrating the fall harvest, but not the the booth part of it, if that makes sense. Okay, okay. So because it, may, it, it, and I didn't do that research, but in my mind, thinking that may be the distinction that they celebrated something but they didn't celebrate it in total okay they okay. celebrated just the harvest because they were pretty pretty ritualistic on those almost harvest thing because they were such an integral part of their livelihood mm -hmm. to set their feast their harvesting and all that type of stuff and, and you know one of the things you've got to remember is that god is god of everything mm -hmm. he's god of everything a lot of this uh, pagan um beliefs were that you had the fertility God and that you have the sun God, you have the water God, you have you know all of these gods and we the Jews were to believe that God was the source of everything so it was important for them to remember as you're harvesting as you're celebrating the harvest that it's the Lord the reason that you have this in the first place he was he is your provider especially when you think about you know the Levites and the Lord is their portion the Lord is their um, provider and we've got to remember that today he gives us strength he gives us the ability to go out and obtain wealth so he is still the source of what we have it's not us and our ability it's not our ingenuity but it is by the grace of God that we have and we can do the things that we have and do let me just put a plug in here because uh, I think this you talk about the, the God is the God right mm -hmm. uh, is the God uh, that 
they would have at least two harvests a year mm -hmm. and have the potential up to three based on the weather because we were over there a few, a few over in uh, Egypt and the weather and the temperature it was all predicated based on the river the Nile River and, the, and the, how the river would rise and fall mm -hmm. and it would rise and it would leave the sediments and as it lowers that would be a time to go in and plant mm -hmm. and so if that happened multiple times a year then they would be able to plant because they have seasons such that they could plant all the time the sediments mm -hmm. uh, the sediments from the river would leave would basically fertilize the soil so they would get at least two harvests a year and so when you start going back looking at these festivals and these celebrations you would see that they would uh, be doing it predicated based on that always celebrating the first harvest right now. all right okay so uh, we talked about them how they had to go out to the hills mm -hmm. bring olive branches wild olives myrtle, palms, and other leaf of branches to make meat as it was written. Again, that was not a simple task, 16 verse 8. So the people went out and brought them and made booths for themselves, each on the roof of his house and in their courtyards and the courtyards of God's house and in the open square of the water gates and in the square of the gate of Ephraim. I guess we kind of went over that one off. <laughs> I guess we kind of got ahead of ourselves. Yeah, we talked about that. <laughs> But the point point is that they built huts everywhere. Everywhere. If you owned a house, you built it on top of the house. You didn't own a house, you yeah, built everywhere. you found somewhere to build you a hut so you could celebrate. Everywhere. Now you gotta understand them that was a sacrifice from a couple of perspectives. One, wasn't a lot of rain over there, but they got out of the comforts of their home and it forced them to think every minute to give some consideration for what God had done for them. You know what? We need to take a break from two Steve minutes in. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. You're going to get something. I don't know if it's going to be of the convocation. It could be of that mission work that happened on Saturday, but you're going to see something. We'll be right back. Joshua the son of Nun until this very day the Israelites had not done so and there was a great rejoicing and celebration you already covered that I think did yes, you already cover I did. All right. I did. I'm sorry <laughs> 18 <laughs> verse every day from the first day of, to the last Ezra read from the book of the law of God they celebrated for feast for seven the feast for seven days on the eighth day there was a closing solemn assembly in accordance with the ordinance so, so that, that, that's that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome to to get together. Now we thought that um, the uh, ain't convocation five days. We thought that was, <laughs> but you know what? Well, we it was probably, only five for us though. I'm sure you said you had the preparation <laughs> and you had the wrap up. So for us, it, yeah, it was about seven days. Yeah, and you know it gets so it becomes so ingrained in you to do this day in and day out. You know, day night to have your focus there, to have your, and you got a plan. You got a plan for this. To do anything for seven days, you almost got at least to do nothing for seven. You got a plan for that, I guess. But um, at any rate, this has got to be amazing to have your thought, your focus, your everything on receiving what it is that God has for you, celebrating God for who He is, for what He has done. And you know, uh, having the faith that he's going to continue because he's God. He's God. He's he's God of the world. Absolutely, uh, you couldn't do anything without him. So, um, you know, 
in, in, in this lesson, I was thinking this morning as I was just kind of meditating, I just hope that I am being uh, responsible enough to share the word, share the gospel uh, with, you know, I had this for society, I had this for the world, but I have a responsibility and obligation also with my family and hope that I'm delivering the word and hope that I'm living the word before them to where uh, they can understand how critical the word of God is for our lives. You know, on that note, one of the things that we're doing as we read in the, the church, and we've offered anybody in the church, anybody that's interested, is to read through the Bible with us chronologically over the next year. Uh, so you can go to our Facebook page or you can go to, uh, what's the other thing, YouTube. I think you can see the instructions on there in terms of how to do that. There's a couple of ways you can do it. The beauty of the way we're doing this, you can get it uh, electronically on your phone or Apple you can- Apple products, I, iPads, uh, iPhones. So that, that version is not in the uh, Android? It's, it's not available for Android. Thank God I have an iPad, um, but yeah. But there's also a physical book, a Bible that you can order. Uh, Nothing like that. Picture. You should see both of those uh, on our Facebook page, YouTube page, to give you instructions on how to get that so that you can read through a follow through. We started on August the 1st. Uh, if you don't have it, you read August 1st, read the first three uh, chapters of Genesis, and um, and we'll be posting stuff out on our Facebook page so we can keep you abreast of it. And one of the things I'll probably do, not publicly, but probably through our group me, if you're not on there, send us a note, say, hey, look, I want to join the Powerhouse group me so I can know what's going on locally in the congregation. One of the things we'll be doing probably is probably maybe daily or often, I won't commit to daily, but often uh, just dropping little nuggets out there. For instance, on the first read, I suggested that they watch the sequence, watch how God orders, how, watch how he performs things, the sequence that he, oh, he performs. A lot of details and never just something to give people. So you don't just casually read, read it for the meat, read it for the nutrition, read it for the vitamins and the nutrition that'll help your soul be strong. All right. Well, look, guys, thank you for uh, joining us. We apologize again for not being with you, uh, but we thank God that he has kept us uh, engaged, uh, uh, given us opportunity to engage on various levels. So look, subscribe, like us if you like us. Like us if you don't like us. Hit that notification button and share, 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 share. So. May the favor and the blessings of the Lord be upon you until we meet again. God bless you.